tonight on Animal House. An ugly confrontation during a dramatic uplift. There's no point for you to take my dogs away. A case of animal neglect. We're just here to help. I don't need help. And a shocking murder leaves a homeless cat. She was inside, but she's scarfed. In central Auckland, there's been a complaint about a number of neglected animals. All right, just here having a look at a job. Um, we've had a call about some dogs kept in cages in dirty conditions and no water. So we'll take a look. Hello, I'm Kevin from Auckland SPCA. We just had a, a call about some dogs kept in cages on the property in dirty conditions. Do you have dogs on the property? Yes, we have one. Can I take a look at that dog? She's nice and healthy, there's no worries there. She's in lovely body condition. Have you had other dogs here recently? Somebody stolen my dog. No, oh, OK. You did have two here. One's gone missing. Yes. So you've just got this one. OK, and where would you normally keep them? In Inside of the room. What about when they go outside? Have you got a fenced-in backyard, have you? Yes. Do you mind if I have a, a quick look? Outside, there's a cage, but no sign a dog has been running free on the property. You've, you've had the dog tied to the tree. You've got the cage here as well. Yesterday, some of my friends came into our house, and they're afraid of dogs, so we just put the cage. The owner's explanation that her friends were afraid of the dog, so she puts it in the cage, is one thing, but it's obvious to Kevin the dog is not being cared for properly. If you've got him outside, make sure he's not tied to a tree with no shelter. Yeah. She's a Siberian husky, uh -huh. so the summertime in New Zealand is very, very hot, yes, I and know. they really need that shade and plenty of water going on. And a free-running dog needs full fencing. Can he get out round here? No, she only stay in the backyard. She can never run. On further investigation, Kevin notices a grooming tool and patches of fur outside the garage, so requests entry to check it out. The amount of fur and dried feces makes Kevin suspicious. I know there's certainly a lot more dogs being kept in here than No, no, just, 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 just two, because... Just two? What I'm seeing around on the floor, the fur and the dried feces, that's from long term. That's from most of the days spent under the hair. Really, they're not out in the backyard at all, are they? They either in they here, are. in the house, or we, out on the... We would normally put in our bedrooms. Keeping the dogs in the bedrooms, not really ideal for a Siberian Husky. They need to be exercised a lot. Really, you need to have them free running in that backyard. And really, there's no feces in the backyard. There's no sign of dog in the backyard, apart from a cage and a short lead to a tree. I want some changes to happen. 100% sure we will do that, but can you please find us, find a dog for us? Because we were trying to ring ISPC it, for many, many times, but you did nothing because you couldn't find a, find a dog for us. What my job is, is regardless of whether it upsets you or not, what I have to do is I have to think of the dog's best interests. It is not healthy for a dog living in darkness in this. Kevin's not happy with the situation, but all he can do for now is leave written instructions. However, it won't be long before he's back to check things out. Another inspector on the road is John Hedemeyer. I've been flagged down by a passerby regarding four donkeys with overgrown hooves, so I'm basically going to check them out. The property is known to the SPCA, as is the owner, a long-term resident of the area. What are they coming for? Hi, Joy. How are you? How's oh, good? We just had a complaint regarding the donkeys again. I'm just here to check them out. They've got to have their feet done, I know. He's been in England, our farrier, and he knows about them. OK. And how's Dandy? I believe he's quite lame. No. Hasn't he? No. OK, uh, can I have a look at him? Oh, I suppose so. You'll have to go right round, though, because you can't... Oh, you're right. On the way, John gets a look at the owner's impressive collection of chooks. 
Because you've got quite a lot, I see. And they just free run the property? That's right. Are you coping OK with this amount of yes, bird yes, life? Yes, yes, yeah. The place is overrun, but John's first priority is the donkeys. How old's Dandy? About 21, 22 or something. He likes his carrots and his bit of bread. And you're able to afford all that? Of course they can, yes. That's good. That's yeah. all I've got for family is my animals. Right. Yes, his feet are bad, but he's not lame with them. No, he's not lame. Oh, yeah, you're my mate. He's kept separate from the others because they're all genies. Yeah. When were they last wormed? Um, oh, about the time when the, uh, he does them, when he... When he does his feet. It's obvious Dandy is well overdue for the farrier, and in a nearby paddock, the female donkeys are just as bad. Their overgrown hooves are likely to be a haven for diseases like laminitis, which, if left untreated, can cause permanent disability. Basically, we need to get this sorted as soon as possible. We're just here to help, OK? I don't need help. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. But she does need help, and John will make sure she gets it as soon as possible. New Zealand was shocked by a particularly grisly murder on Auckland's North Shore when an elderly woman was killed in her home. She had no relatives in New Zealand, but she did have a cat and some goldfish, so with no one to look after them, the SPCA has been called. One of the detectives has been feeding the cat and also a neighbour from across the road. So they've been well aware that the cat's been here and they've also had to drain the fish pond a couple of times to look for evidence and feed them as well. So they've been well looked after while they've been examining the house. So what we've been called in for is to come and collect the cat. Another day we'll come back and grab the goldfish and once we've found something for them to go as well. Hey, yeah. Unfortunately, the cat has been so traumatised by the awful events, it has gone into hiding. She was inside, but she's scarpered, so they think she may have come down here. She can get in through a hole up by the other side of the deck. The cat doesn't want to be found, so Todd has to resort to other measures. What we've had to do is set a trap inside the enclosed area. Hopefully we'll catch her fairly soon. It's unfortunate in this kind of situation. The animals are left a bit in the lurch. The goldfish are secure for now, but Todd will have to wait and see if the cat takes the bait. Coming up, Kevin meets resistance at the home of the husky. Can you come out and have a talk, please? The neglected donkeys are at risk. Fungus are just eating away at their soul. And a pig wins a heart. He's just really cute. I wish I could pick him up, really. In central Auckland, Kevin is back to check that the husky has a running wire and a kennel. This is one of several visits, but each time no one has answered the door. I don't know what they're playing at, but um, yeah, just decided not to open the doors. However, Kevin is convinced someone is home. The face looking through the window really gave it away. I've heard a young puppy yapping from one of the bedrooms that I've sent home. It was a very simple request, but for some unknown reason, they decided to um, just ignore us and hope we go away. Uh, if that doesn't happen. Kevin's original suspicion that the owner has more than one dog has since been confirmed by a neighbour. She said there's three dogs, definitely. Uh, two Samoids, there was two Huskies, so they did have four dogs. It did sound like a pup from that bedroom, and we're seeing the puppy milk powder too. I'd say they've got pups as well. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to see how they're being looked after. This is possibly even a running wire attempt, this piece of rope, unless it's a clothesline, but there seems to be dog feces underneath. But, of course, they're, they're lacking the, uh, the kennel. Can you come out and have a talk, please? The fact that the owner refuses to cooperate or communicate with Kevin means he will now have to apply for a search warrant. This is my fourth visit, and um, I'll be back again. So uh, I will get a result from it, so I will get things sorted. After his visit to Joy's farm, John wasted no time organising farrier Kevin Wollstone and his wife Isabel to tend to the donkey's hooves. Donkeys coming from a dry country, they come to New Zealand uh, on uh, wet winter uh, conditions. They get a lot of mud in there, a lot of bacteria builds up, and we end up with what we call seedy tail or thrush, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, bad for their feet. In the case of this donkey here, it needs treatment every three or four days over the next few months to actually get it to back to normal feet again. 
the people do rely on the ferry to try and fix this problem. We can only do so much. It's all to do with diet and the environment they're living in at the time. Come on, girl. This grey, chalky stuff here, that's the actual fungus that's just eating away at that soil. It's very, very unhealthy. The dead hoof is no use, so we'll just cut away everything that we can, try and get down to some healthy foot. What you've got is foot growing and foot deteriorating at the same time. Yeah. And it really just needs a good swab with some copper sulphate and dry conditions that foot will come right. But um, like I say, it needs, we'll need a follow-up at some stage over the next few weeks. I'll pop over and um, check on it. The infected hooves are transformed into healthy ones. So your donkeys will be set for a few weeks then, and uh, yeah. yeah, they're looking no, pretty happy now. So. Oh yes, they look good. The donkeys' feet have all been shod, so that's they're all looking good. Yeah. John hasn't forgotten the huge chook population either. I'm not too sure how we're going to approach this job. Apart from the sheer numbers of fowl that, that's on the property, I mean, there's actually nothing wrong with them. I mean, they're in their element, picking around, scavenging. Basically, over the next few months, we need to just monitor their conditions. And at the same time, John will make sure Joy's donkeys get their ongoing checks as well. A recent arrival at the SBCA is Chester the Kuni Kuni Pig. Chester's been here for about two and a half months. He was abandoned by his owners. We gave the owners seven days to come forward and reclaim him, but nobody came forward. So we decided that we wanted to keep him because he's really friendly. He's got a little friend, a little sheep called Wayne, and they cuddle up together. Cooney Coonies, which is the breed he is, are supposed to learn quicker than dogs do. So we've decided to keep him for our education centre. His job will be meeting and greeting all the children and also any other groups that come in to visit us. Before his ambassadorial debut, Chester will be put through his paces by Craig, who's a bit of a fan. He's just really cute. Um, I wish I could pick him up, really. I've always been interested in pigs, and he's a neat size, and you can pretty much do anything with him. We've managed to teach Chester how to sit. Sit and lie down. Down. Good boy. He's really fast learner. You need to reward them though. So that's why I use the apple because it's one of his favorite. Because Chester spends quite a bit of time indoors, he's also being toilet trained. We've put a tray in his pen at night and he started to use that rather than toileting all over the place. So then it's just the progression from the tray to solely outside. As an SPCA ambassador, Chester will have to meet certain standards, including his weight. That's it. Good boy. He's put on a kilo, so he's getting a bit fat there. So we'll just be feeding him grass during the summer and vegetables, and then maybe in winter when the grass is a bit low, we'll give him some pig tucker. <laughs> We're back here at the house where a cat that had been left behind, unfortunately, by when its owner was murdered. Um, we set a trap about three days ago, and she had been evading the trap for the last few days. She actually had even eaten the food out of the trap by leaning over the pressure plate from within the trap. Today, when I set the trap, I pulled the food back and put in a particularly nice brand of food, and it's worked. This is all of her... Um, her vaccination cards and her registration certificate that she is a um, purebred Tonkinese. Oh. Oh. She's a very savvy cat. She's an oriental. They're usually pretty onto it and pretty brainy. Her name to be called for when she's coming to dinner is Milady, but her um, actual pedigree name, as according to her pedigree papers here, is Battle Abbey Celia. She's very cute and obviously pretty well fed, because it's probably one of the fattest Tonkinese I've ever seen. We're assuming that she's pretty much a, a one-person cat, that she's obviously bonded well with, with the owner, and now the owner's gone, she's become quite timid and afraid to approach people. So the future is a bit uncertain for all the pets left homeless after this terrible event. Coming up, a dramatic outcome at the home of the husky. You all say us! Oh, I'm so angry oh, with you, you know! I don't have a hearing problem. Kevin's not happy that the owner of the husky is refusing to comply with animal welfare regulations, so he's returning to the property with a search warrant, accompanied by colleague John Hedemeyer. Because I've had um, no response from anybody inside for each of my other visits, OK, this is a search warrant. This 
gone through the courts and the courts have given me permission to search your house. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the dogs. Why you have to take the dogs away? You were given written instruction. Yes, we already ordered a kennel. I have had no contact from anybody. I, Every I, time I come I here, no one, I've had no call from anybody. Everything has been ignored. But, What's going to happen, OK, is so I'm going to remove all the dogs on the property. Why? From From there, we're going to start communicating. And you can How can we get the dogs back? And you can by start communicating. But there's no point for you to take my dogs away. There's no point. I have to ask you. I'm so angry with you, you know? I don't have a hearing problem. I can hear very well. But I'm okay? really angry with I'm not, you. I'm not yelling at you, am I'm I? I'm yelling with no, you. You upset us. You upset us, you know? No. You go downstairs. We, we did explain everything to you. You have made some decisions. You have chose not to fulfil the requirements and the notice that I've given to give those dogs shelter out in the back. OK, not only that, you have chosen not to communicate at all. The end of the story is we are going to enter the house. We will remove all dogs in the property. You can apply to get them back, and I'm quite prepared to listen, providing you make the adjustments that we talked about initially. I'm happy for them to come back. <laughs> At this point, the owner becomes so distressed, she begins hyperventilating. Come on, you're fine. Whoa, just relax. And an ambulance is called. Shortly after that, the police arrive to assist the SPCA in the uplift. Where are the dogs, man? Alan, he lives here in my house. Now, unfortunately, he's uh, legally allowed to be here. Yeah. All right. The problem is, if you start being a problem, you end up getting locked up as well, OK? For obstruction. I can hear pups from in here. How many you taken? Uh, everything that's in the house. So there's, okay. there's we've got three here and any pups. Hello, beautiful. Let, let them do what they need to do. Yeah. Move away or you'll get knocked I, I know, I know. How, how move, do I, how, how move do I? Move away or you'll get knocked up. I just can't Eventually remove the animals from the house. There's a bitch Samoyed and four puppies. The Siberian Husky, a Samoyed, a male. Keeping dogs like this locked in bedrooms, they're not objects, they're animals, and they've got uh, requirements and needs that need to be met. Exercise and shelter from the sun, especially with these dense coats. If they want to look at getting the dogs back, I want to see the setup that I instructed them to do in the first place. As soon as they've done that, they can contact me and I'll go back for a recheck. But for now, the dogs will be in the care of the SBCA. Chester the Cooney Cooney Pig is about to make his debut in front of the public, so Fiona and Craig are giving him a shampoo. So after he's dried off, I'm going to put on a little bit of sunblock, because pigs, they don't have a lot of hair, so they're also prone to getting sunburnt, especially like the pink breed. He's making his happy grunt. Spruced up and smelling sweet, Chester struts his stuff for the visitors at the SPCA's new animal education centre. Do you know what Chester is? Yeah, he's a pig. Do you know what kind of pig? Feel what he feels like. Hay. Is it? Does it feel like hay? Does it? But he's lovely and pretty funny, eh? He's pretty good. Chester is one of the animals that will help teach children how to respect all living things. The SBCA believes this will have a direct impact on the reduction of cruelty to animals. <laughs> The uplifted husky and samoids have spent the night in the care of the SBCA. The puppies are gauged to be three weeks old, which means they were probably at the house during Kevin's first visit. As promised, Kevin has returned to check the property. The dog owner's complied with everything. We've now got brand new wooden kettles and running wires. I'm happy for the dogs to be returned. Within 24 hours, it's all been cleared up. Unfortunately, we've lost an awful lot of man hours involved. My own, the courts, police, St John's Ambulance. It was all uncalled for. So the owner is now able to reclaim her dogs. On Auckland's North Shore, the goldfish left behind when their owner was murdered have found a new home. They've been adopted by SPCA volunteer Cheryl, who has a connection to the former owner. She was a family friend of my mama and uh, decided it was probably a nice thing and it would remind me of her. We just put the pond in about two weeks earlier, so it was the right thing to do. 
the goldfish will hardly know the difference. However, thinking her own cat might be tempted by the goldfish, Cheryl is taking precautions. Sure, he'd be fine, but you just never know. <laughs> There's also a good outcome for Milady. After being checked over by a vet, she's ready to be picked up by her new owner. She's fit and healthy. She's a little bit overweight for a Tonkinese, but she's quite timid at the moment, but who knows what she's been through with um, all the trauma that's been in her home. But lots of love and attention, she'll be fine. Milady's new owner arrives to see her for the first time. She's beautiful. Oh, I think she's lovely. I was talking to a friend that was working on the case and mentioned that there was a cat involved and I was just curious as to what was going to happen to the cat and I offered to take her. I just felt really sorry for her. Not thinking that she was going to be a pedigree, I was just imagining she was going to be a, a moggy. I had an elderly cat that passed away last year so um, yeah, she'll be filling a bit of a gap so it'll be quite nice. As for keeping her name Milady... I was thinking I might change it to Macy or something like that. Yeah. I can't imagine myself calling out my lady at dinner time with <laughs> no person. <laughs> oh, good girl. She's purring. I think we'll get on just fine. <laughs>